Oh man, there's a lot under there. This is a really bad situation here. And they're all razor sharp. So what's the plan now? The plan now is to, to burn it all down. We're gonna bring in heavy machinery, flatten the yard. It's unrideable. The yard is ruined. We've been traveling a lot this year, which has been awesome. But unfortunately, the yard has been completely taken over by weeds. Not just any weeds, but painful ones. Our friend Phil is in town from Skills with Phil YouTube channel. He's hoping to ride the jumps, but it's gonna take a lot of work to get them ready. Let's have a look at what kind of weeds we're dealing with. So these are thistles right here. These things are absolutely vicious. They're an invasive weed and they are covered in little thorns. I don't even mean little thorns. They're covered in massive thorns. And they're as tall as Owen. They're getting really tall. Yeah, they're a real bummer. So that's problem number one right there. Problem number two, the goat heads. You know, at first glance, this doesn't look so bad, right? It's just some ground cover weeds, right? Even though it's a little bit grown over, I would be willing to hit this in its current state. It might roll slow, but it, it'd be fine. Check this out. All right, so just walk through this real quick. Just step around on it. And then, uh, <laughs> what the? Yeah, that's a problem. So these are goat heads right here. They fall off the plant and then they just make another plant, but like that way, like another weed. Yeah. So. It actually looks like a goat head, a goat skull. These are super sharp. They go through leather gloves, they go through shoes, and they most definitely go through tires. Now that you've seen what we're dealing with, we're gonna get to work pulling these weeds, pull the tarps off, and uh, let's get riding by this evening. You gonna give this one a shot, Owen? Yeah. So you scoop it up like this first. And then you can hold it like that. And then you go down right next to the root and go straight down. And then you pull back. Oh, 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 it cracked. Ooh, that's a good one. When you can hear them <laughs> popping and like you breaking up the dirt as it goes, that's what you're looking for. And you can tell by how thick this root is. In other years, I've basically scraped it with a shovel and cut it off. So this root continues to keep growing. And even though you cut off the top, the root's still alive. And so you'll, that's how you get more weeds. So we actually have a goat head right here in the middle of Milo's line as well. These things just grow outwards like this. And so I think best case scenario, we get it like this. Hopefully it doesn't go through my leather gloves because they'll go through leather gloves. Dang it. So this is the plant and it's got a whole bunch of goat heads attached to it. The problem is all the goat heads that are not attached to it anymore, which are all over here. Is that fire ant trying to eat a worm? Is that a fire ant eating a worm? Fire ant says retreat. That's the biggest pile of vicious goat heads I've ever seen in my life. That's a lot of flat tires in one pile, isn't it? Yeah, like if you just pulled out the weeds and then like the goat heads are just sitting around, Every lap you'd have to fix your tire. So you were just mentioning that you think these goat heads suck. Well, I know something that sucks more. Vacuum! <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if the vacuum cleaner will do it. It's easy enough to get the plants out of the ground. The hard part is picking up all the goat heads afterwards. They're camouflaged with the dirt, so they're really hard to see. And each one you miss is a potential flat tire. And it'll grow into another goat head plant in the future. When you left your house to fly out here, did you think you'd be vacuuming dirt jumps? That was not the first thing that came to mind, but I guess I should expect the unexpected. <laughs> this is literally one of the most tedious things I've ever had to do in terms of building. Zero out of 10, would not recommend. Not sure how well this is uh, working. All the uh, goat heads are getting stuck in the tube. It's losing its suck power, so it's not really doing much right now, so. Might need to find another plan. Phil is tired of vacuuming and getting him stuck everywhere. He has a new idea. Yeah, we're just gonna use this uh, little lighter here and we're gonna go ahead and just burn every one of them. Or we could use this to light the propane torch. And kill it with fire. Since we're lighting a propane tank on fire, it has uh, you know some explosion protections. You'll start to hear gas coming out though. So we are currently killing goat heads with fire. Attempting to. Attempting to. We have some smoke. I'm not sure we're making much progress. We had to test out the theory, right? So I think we would need more of like a laser beam to disintegrate the goat heads. I think that's the theory that we were uh, working off of, right, Phil? Basically. Yeah. 
But uh, since we don't have laser beams, uh, I don't think the propane torch is working that well. It's a little bit more brittle, but it's basically just darker in color now. You know what's great about these? Um, they're really durable. They are viable seeds for seven years. <laughs> so basically, me having goat heads in the backyard is the equivalent of breaking a mirror and getting seven years of bad luck, if you believe in that. That's insane. That's a bag full of pain right there. <laughs> So at this point, we've tried a whole bunch of different methods to get the goat heads off the riding surface. And it seems like they're all working a little bit, but the least, we don't really have a best solution. We only have a least bad solution. This is actually just to walk around on the riding surface, fill up our shoes with goat heads, and then scrape them off into the garbage bag right there. Now it's time to pull the tarps. The dirt should be perfect under there. No goat heads, at least where the tarps are. So that's good. satisfying than picking up go heads. That sucks. This, it's kind of fun. Kind of. That looks a little bit better. It's actually a turn here now. The chickens are still kicking. They're doing good. They're out here to find all the bugs. I kind of can't believe it, but we actually pulled it off. Everyone came together, team effort, and bottom line there is just don't give up because that was uh, super intimidating. None of us wanted to do what we had to do today, but we got the job done. Now we get to ride. We got just enough light to get some laps through. We are herding the chickens. Oh, don't let them get under the deck. We're trying to herd the chickens back into the coop so we don't hit them. Herding chickens. It's like herding cats, but uh, different. <laughs> oh. Not our brand new worm. Nope. Uh, then you can move out of the way, and there you go. Okay, this will work. No, you stand right there. This is perfect. We got a good scenario right now. Milo, slowly walk him in from the back. There we go. That's Colonel Sanders. Come on, Colonel. Time to go home. That's your home. Go to your home. Mission accomplished. Nice right, work, guys. Is that Hold your first out. time uh, chicken wrangling? It's my first time chicken, chick, chick, chicken. Oh. <laughs> buck, buck, buck. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, yes. <laughs> first time chicken wrangler, you did awesome. First time seeing that work. <laughs> Thanks for all the work, that was awesome. That was a heinous day of work. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a lot of work, so Kelly McGarry was right. I've kind of earned a reputation for uh, hosting the Border Slave Labor Camp here, so people come to visit, they think they're going to ride some trails, have some fun, show up to a perfectly groomed track ready to go. Get a free place to stay. Yeah, you know, the whole program. <laughs> Turns out, you're reporting for work. you got to earn your keep here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really appreciate it, Phil, that was awesome. Yeah. Um, Thanks for having me. Now time to flow through the jumps, we earned this. What's the rules, Owen? No dig, no ride. <laughs> Even applies to you guys, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm not as strict as I used to be about that. Uh, I love having people over to just come ride, but uh, I love help when I got it too. Should we do a couple of pump track laps and get warmed up? Uh, I'll pass on that given that I'm on my Enduro bike. <laughs> <laughs> so what, 170 up front? And uh, 160 in the back. 160 in the back. I think this will officially be the biggest bike that's been ridden here. 
Well, uh, it hasn't been written here yet. <laughs> yeah. Did Seth hit it on his release, Milo? Yeah, he did. Okay, so he hit the first two on his release also. Oh, yeah. We'll hit Milo's line first. It works uh, pretty well. Drop in on the roll-in, pump the roller, and you kind of float through. The first one's a little bit more of a hip than it looks like. Okay. So second one, just aim for the middle because you can't go off to either side because it's straight drops. Because <laughs> it's framed up. But if you land good, the next one's pretty good. I trust people who know how to build. Getting a little bit low. Can you toss up the pump, Milo? <sighs> nice. Tires a little low. Yeah. Drop it in. First run through. Nice riding, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> so Milo's, work on this thing. <laughs> Milo's line done. And then hit the big dogs. They should work better on that bike, but uh, this is a classic example of uh, it's not the bike, it's the rider. <laughs> You've got a squirrel catcher over here. Yeah, so with kids, I uh, when I originally built this, I didn't put steps to the bottom because I didn't want them just walking up. How's the accommodations, Phil? It's pretty lush. <laughs> <laughs> feel like I'm at a bougie Airbnb. <laughs> Straight out of bed uh, to uh, bikes. Bed to bikes. B bed to shred. Yeah, bed to shred. <laughs> Airbnb. Air. <laughs> <laughs> I put the air in Airbnb. <laughs> All right, for this line, put in a half crank up here. And if you pump the roller and the, the bottom of the lip and then kind of push through, you'll get float through it no problem. Okay. It's a decent sized jump. So yeah. like just worry about getting the distance this first time and figure it out, but it works well. Let's do this. I got confidence in you. All right, rolling. Oh. Ooh. That was a case. How'd it go for you? Not good. I lost a lot of speed on that first like pump or something. I, like, I knew coming into the first one, I was gonna come up short, and then by the time I was at the second one, I couldn't even bail. So I was like, I guess we're going dead sailor off that. So oh, wow. I got a divot to fix. Yep, that's a... That, that, that's a party foul. We're having Mexican tonight. You wanted a quesadilla? <laughs> <laughs> that would be on uh, my case of the Mondays. That was a case of the Mondays. <laughs> you could say you weren't Phil in that line. Dad jokes all day. Oh man, I'm losing a lot of speed pumping on this guy. 29ers weren't meant to be dirt jumpers. Oh uh, yeah, 160, 170 travel 29er is, uh, that's definitely the biggest bike that's been through here. I'm stubborn, I'm gonna make it through without casing. Yeah, I think you got it for sure. Oof. Oh. <laughs> so good until that last one. <laughs> that sounded brutal. I just hate ca like casing people's jumps. Ah, oh, you're good. <laughs> That's payback for making me do all this work today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, drop it in. There we go. I'm embarrassed it took me so long to get through them. I was sick. <laughs> Biggest bike to make it through the line. You get the award. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so what I really like about these jumps is they're proper like dirt jump style jump, meaning that they send you really high 
and the landing is really steep. If you land it right, it's just so smooth. These jumps, they're proper dirt jumps and I miss that feeling. My, my whole riding style growing up as a dirt jumper is about finding the flow in technical sections. And if you look at all my riding, it comes back to dirt jumping. Thank you so much for coming over, Phil. Um, I was happy to host you. We've been talking about it for a while and I know I put him to work the whole time, but uh, <laughs> if you spend enough time at the trails, like you, you want to dig before you ride anyway. And so um, it was a lot of fun. We, we got a lot of work done and yeah, anytime you have those feelings of like, this is overwhelming and I just don't even want to deal with it. Just know that I have those feelings too with the yard. <laughs> Phil has those feelings with his yard and um, yeah, you just kind of buckle down and uh, get the work done and then it's worth it, big payoff. Dude, like so much, like so many tasks seem overwhelming and then once you put a shovel in the ground, usually it goes faster than you expect. We got her done today and that's awesome. So thanks for watching. I know you've watched uh, Phil's channel. If you haven't, check out Skills with Phil. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, we'd love to have you here. We've got a lot more fun stuff coming and I think the next video might be Owen hitting some jumps here in the yard. He's been chomping at the bit. <laughs> if you want some more Owen action, tune in for the next video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next adventure. Oh yeah. Putting down some water, Owen? Yeah. And now my belly hurts because I chugged. <laughs> you gotta find some moderation there, huh? Yeah. <laughs>